All right, this is Todd Owens of Capital Chaos TV. We're here at 2014 Winter NAM with uh, Caden from Hyrex. How you doing? Good, man. Just uh, hanging out, having some drinks. Uh, I had to bring my own flask. So this is a really strong vodka and orange juice, but I'm having a great time. Seeing a lot of people I haven't seen in a long time. Awesome. I, I, I was coming here thinking I was going to hate it, and I actually ended up liking it. Weird. Uh, this is your first time here? Or? For many years, I put off not doing it because I just thought, man, this thing's all corporate. And But then at the end of the day, it's really about there are fans here just as well as musicians. And then there's a lot of musicians that I either respect or, or know. So, no, it's, it's been great. NAMM's been cool. It's my first year ever coming, though. 2014. Wow. Yeah, I'm surprised with your history that it's the first time. I just, but I really tried to put it off. Like I, I think the last five years in a row I've said, I'm going to go, and then I, last minute I say no. But I think it's like, for me, opening new ground, because I've always kind of stayed more in the DIY scene and not come out to corporate events. And this is way corporate. But at the same time, I'm... Meeting people that are from the underground metal scene, so it, it's good for me at the same time. Seems to be kind of a good melding of the corporate world and there is a lot of fans here and then obviously a lot of bands here too. I so the, the plus, the plus is the fans. Like, yeah, I mean, I understand they got to sell shit. They got to sell guitars, amps, all that. But really, to me, all these events, especially because over the years they've made it more kind of a, a big deal, it needs to be for the fans totally. Like, okay, musicians can come. But at the same time, the fans should be able to enjoy it and maybe meet one of their musicians outside of the element of seeing them in concert. Like maybe to see a guy walking by and be able to strike up a conversation. I've done that a lot here today and it's been an honor to meet kids right here and just talk to them. And uh, is there any uh, gear that you're interested in here at Nam or well, anything that you're using well, my uh, equipment wise? Players, my guitar players are, you know, they play EVH and Jackson and shit. But for me, I'm a singer, so the only thing I would ever really need is a microphone, and my favorite mic's always been Sure. You've been with Sure. And I don't need an endorsement for that because the best thing about Sure microphones, if you buy one, they last so fucking long that you'll have them for a long time. So. And it's such a huge company, you'd have to be like in U2 to get an endorsement anyway, so. But I don't really care for that shit. For me, it's like, I know what I like, I go buy it, you know, it's a good microphone, it lasts forever. And and what's going on with Hyrex? So you guys are working on a new yeah. album, right? Yeah. Or Just finished the new album, really excited. The problem with new albums, once they're done, is the waiting process, like we're waiting till it comes out worldwide March 4th. Uh, on SPV Records, Steam Hammer Records from Germany, which is universal label, so that's awesome. It's a new label for us. The record's called Immortal Legacy, and it's uh, 12 songs of extreme metal, like thrash metal the way we've been doing it for many years, but with bigger, better production. The producer's right over there, Bill Matoyer, he produced the album, and uh, it's an honor working with him because he's worked with Slade. Legendary. Yeah, I, I saw him and I was like, wow, that's yeah. that's Bill. So yeah, yeah, no, so everything's been good on that level. The production's sick. Uh, the record's probably the best record I think we've ever done. So I, I, I really can't wait for the fans to hear it. It's been a while. How long has it been since uh, your last, last... Last studio record was El Rostro del Muerte back in 2009. So it's been a while, but we've been on tour like... For us, we're not one of those bands that like does a record and only goes out for a little bit and does another record. We do records for like minimum two years, like we'll tour on that record because the world is so freaking big that you know, South, even just South America, it takes a lot of time to even tour there. But this year, we'll be doing more stuff. We're gonna do U.S. We're gonna do back to South America and we'll do Europe. And we haven't been to Europe in a long time, so that should be phenomenal. Any any other bands that you're touring with or anything that you know that is in the works, either well, the with main, you or headlining above you? Or? Yeah, well, the main thing that, that I can actually talk about at the moment, because you don't really want to talk about stuff until it's totally booked, right. but the main thing is we're doing this festival in Germany called Bang Your Head, and this year it's us, Twisted Sister, Michael Shanker, and that's awesome for us, because these are bands that we grew up on anyway. So that's the big one. But there'll be more dates added. It's just uh, like getting the record out's the the big priority, and after that, we'll be in support of that new album. And then uh, somebody told me that you might have some information about the uh, the introduction of the blast beat, and I wanted to ask you about That's that. Hot. That anybody even thinks about that shit is cool because back when we were doing blast beats, that that wasn't people didn't even know what a fucking blast beat was. It just wasn't called a blast. Yeah, right? it wasn't called a blast beat. It was just playing as fast as you fucking could, you know. But for even the first Hyrax album, 85, there's a song on there called Destroy. 
And then on the second record, a record called Hate, Fear, and Power, the title track, that's a blast beat. And um, for me, it's awesome when, when bands tell you that they were kind of influenced by that shit. Like bands like DSI, the drummer from that band, amazing drummer. Steve. Yeah, amazing fucking drummer. And I've heard him talk about us in interviews, and it's like really nice when you see other bands talk about your music. Napalm Death's another band. Um, I love those guys. You know, it's, it's nice when you meet other musicians that you actually have respect for. So if you influence any of those bands, that's a, that's a compliment. And to see that Blast Beats became something is mind-blowing for me. But like I said, back in the day when we first started doing Blast Beats, we were just trying to play as fast as we fucking could, you know, and stay on time, you know. And that was before click tracks. And when, when, did you, when did you guys start the band? When was the first incarnation of Hyrax? The first incarnation was 84. We started out of Orange County, and we were also on the fringe of Long Beach, so they call Long Beach L.A. County, too. But uh, really where our break happened, though, is after we did our first demo, we started getting offers, and we went up to uh, Monterey, California, and our first show was Slayer, Hyrax, and Death Angel. So from that point on, it just got crazier. We came back to L.A., did a new album, Raging Violence, signed with Metal Blade Records, and the rest was just awesome. What, what was like some of the earliest influences when you were starting the band in 84? Like What bands were driving you? Or we, we obviously grew up on the classics. I mean, to this day, I still listen to Deep Purple and Thin Lizzy. Those are like two of my fucking, you know, early gods. Early Scorpions with Yuli, Yuli John Roth. Still to this day, when I listen to those records, my mind is blown. But those are the early, like, be, even before the British New Wave, and then obviously Priest, and then everybody, like Saxon, Maiden, Motorhead, Venom. You know, that stuff made you want to take your music to another level. That's really what those bands did to us. We just heard what they were doing, and we're like, how can we add to that and take it fucking further? So those were the early bands, and... To this day, I still, when I need inspiration, I'll go back and listen to a lot of those, like, Black Metal and Thin Lizzy, anything from, like, say, Jailbreak, Black Rose. Those records, when I listen to them now, they still influence me. And how was it in the early days? You said Orange County, so how was it? I mean, was there a lot of support then, or you hear about, you know, the Bay Area kind of well, catching on earlier? We then? Had, yeah, we all had our, our own scene, like, we had our own fan base, so bands like Slayer, Slayer Us, and there was another band called Dark Angel, oh, yeah. and we fucking were brutal in the clubs like you could go see any one of us and we were packing venues that were like minimum 300 to 500 people and that was good especially at the beginning of thrash metal because we were kind of outcast because of the hair metal bands in hollywood you know hollywood always kind of favored that stuff but we were there and we were making an impact and they had to start paying attention that we were bird your way in yeah we we were going to knock down the door either way but then we went to san francisco and that just made everything just blow up when we went, the first time we played san francisco it was legacy who became testament they were opening then it was us where was it? Where, where was the venue you now? Or? Ruthie's Inn. Ruthie's Inn. Great. Berkeley, yeah. Great memories, yeah. And then uh, Exodus was the headliner. and that Wow, what a lineup. A fucking amazing lineup. If you had that same lineup today, people would shit themselves, you know. But I remember the special thing about that show is while we were playing, I remember looking right when the first song started and James Hetfield, Cliff Burton, and Gary Holt were in the front row. So there was always that metal. Support. Unit. Yeah, right. yeah. And also they're checking you out, which they should be, you know. And so I've always had a lot of respect for San Francisco. Still to this day, I love that city. It's kind of like our second home in the U.S., you know. You still live down in here in Orange County? Still, well, I'm actually in Long Beach, which is L.A. County, but Long Beach always wants to be recognized, so that's where I live now, and it's it's been awesome. You know, I, I've been able to get to Hollywood if I need to. Like, we do shows there. We'll do the House of Blues, or we'll do, like, we're going to do our record release show in Hollywood, and it's like 30, 40 minutes from my house, you know. And then it's eight hours in San Francisco if I want to get in a car and take a little long drive. But exactly. it's all good, you know. All right. Well, that's all I have for you, Caden. I just Thank want to say you, thanks for taking the time to be with us. And if anything else you want to share for uh, Capital Chaos TV? Capital Chaos TV kicks fucking ass. Watch it and learn. Metal forever.